That's the church we were in yesterday. That's San Iago. And I forgot the other one. With an N. It'll come back to me. Okay. There are signs. Navigating in the city always seems a bit more difficult to me. Well, I was up early, did all my morning exercises, all the stretches, and I am off with Aurelio, and we're going to meet Tina. Uh, Hi. <laughs> so, you see these are way markers on the ground. And Pamplona is a very big city and all of the all of the uh, pilgrims might get lost if we didn't have these wonderful way markers guiding us. And um, we got kind of a late start this morning. It was early, but then it was also late. But I feel really great having just my everything on my back. So I have my, I'm carrying my bag, I'm not transporting it. And it's a fantastic feeling. So, see you later. <laughs> so this is just a beautiful field of poppies and there were poppies growing along the roadside back there where Aurelio made the video. And this is, this might be wheat growing, so maybe poppies like to grow with wheat. And I'm not sure what that one is. If anybody knows, you can write it in the comments. So, those are the ruins that I took a photograph of in the distance. And we're not too far away from Sarikuyuki. That's our next stop and we're gonna have a little rest. And these are just endless wheat fields with random poppies growing in them. So that's the mountainside. This is the side we're traveling. Lots of pilgrims on the path today. And that's our, you probably can't see it, but at the end of those windmills, we're like snaking along the windmills as a path. And at the end of those windmills is the top of this mountain range. And that's where we're gonna stop and I'm gonna massage my feet and I'm gonna take a little rest. I am at any rate. It's hard going, going up the hill. mentioned I'm gonna get my backpack fixed. I'm gonna the metal metal uh, bars in it are much too long for my body so I'm gonna see if I can get them cut and it will shorten my pack and give my neck and head room and hopefully it will all feel a lot better. But this is, of course, my first day carrying my pack with my little bag. So I've got food and water and the other things. There's not too many things, though. I dropped seven and a half from 12 kilos, so that leaves five. I'm probably, well, I was thinking four in my little pack, so that would be nine. It might still be that heavy. I'm not sure. Eight or nine, or something like that. Anyway, bye bye for now. Can you hear the sound of the windmills? I like it. I find it quite comforting. Maybe it reminds me of ocean breezes. 
always makes me think of a sense of home. And I don't mean California necessarily. Just that feeling. I don't know if you can see it. There are thousands of little beetle bugs flying all through the air here. They're all over the place. I don't know what they are. They look like very long giant ladybugs. But I think that's our path all across the hills there. Pilgrims sculpture. No, 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 Ah, so maybe it's what goes down that way, so we're not following the top. We're going down that way. So somewhere out there. This is where we're going. So, one of those cities up ahead is Uterga. And that's the path down. So it's a little bit steep. So not the path across the bridge that I thought before but we're not going to be taking it because I'm walking with Tina today and she's a very experienced Caminoist a very experienced pilgrim and um, well this looks like when they've been they've discovered some some bones I don't know who it's from um, and she has an alternative route. And it takes us about two kilometers longer, but it's not as steep and it's more scenic. So, and then it won't be as busy with pilgrims probably because not so many people know about it maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Lots of windmills in the distance if you can see them. They go all the way across the ridge, all the way across there. Yeah. Mm. Still more hills in the far, far distance. Yeah. And unfortunately, I can't say where the um, where the Pyrenees move into the next mountain range. But I don't know. We can look it up on a map. Costella, 550, eh, not so bad. Seoul, 9,700. Sydney, 17,000. Wait, can you see the one? There. 17,500 in that direction. This is cute. Yeah, very cute. So, okay. <laughs> So don't quote me on this, but I think this is mountain Arnica. That's what it, it looks like, the pictures that I have. Oh, and there's, there are um, thistles in there, yeah. like it, like at home. And it looks like it's about, well, Tina was thinking it's about 35 degrees. I'm certainly having a really hard time in the heat. And yeah, but we're nearly there. And that's maybe where we were, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> there are windmills at the top of all the hills. But yeah, I think up there. And very soon I hope I'll be able to 
pour some cold water over my head. <laughs> so, I'm actually just following the signs because if all goes well tomorrow, I'm just doing a little practice walk now in the evening. If it all goes well tomorrow, then I'm gonna wake up quite early and and leave while it's still dark. Um, you know, and the real concern for me in doing that is that I'll miss a way marker. Um, but it doesn't, like if I left at 5.30, I'd have an hour before dawn. And I don't know if, um, you know, if it starts getting light around six or not, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure. But signs definitely this way, although this looks like a dead end. Oh, there might be a path up ahead. Yeah, so that's the plan. Um, because today I was really caught out. I got a late start today, so it wasn't until 7.30 and um, walked, I think, five and a half hours. So um, I was like dead. It was 35 degrees from like, I don't know, 10.30 or something. And uh, I was absolutely destroyed. So when I got here again, I cried <laughs> because not out of sadness and not out of, you know, anything like that. It's just exhaustion. It was just pure exhaustion. And um, I'm guessing. Ah, okay, yes, this is it. Okay. So this is the, it's just like a party happening there. Um, you see some of this countryside? Yeah, so this is the path. I'll be heading down tomorrow. And I'm kind of staying off the main, um, I'm not doing the main circuit. Yeah, and that looks pretty straightforward continuing on up that way. So I think that should be pretty easy. Um, I'm not doing the main stages like um, like the books show because I'm trying to stay a little bit out of the, the crowds, I guess, because it's really crowded. And again, if I leave early, then I will hopefully avoid all the heat and the pure exhaustion. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Yeah, this is day five. Um, it's pretty incredible. Um, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, I haven't found a way home yet. Um, still making plans for the next day, you know. But there are definitely times where I feel like, oh my God, can I even go on? You know, can I keep going? Um, it's it's tough you know and the heat you know more than anything the heat is tough for me and you know i'm a california girl you know so i've really acclimatized to uh first german weather and then scottish weather and and today was my first day uh carrying the full pack which so i sent back seven and a half kilos but now this has my little bag in it so i think i'm probably at seven kilos right now six or seven um probably some more like seven and and it's made for very tall men um with a very you know narrow chest so it's like it doesn't even fit me properly i'm gonna have to get um the metal the metal in it cut but i think i mentioned that already and and then maybe it'll feel a bit easier, you know, to use the bag. So it's not the perfect bag for me, but the Camino is great. The people are great. We had fantastic food. You'll see some good pictures and, um, you know, vegan food. So just brilliant. And everybody's really sweet. And, um, you know, and I've met some really wonderful people already on the Camino and very helpful. and. Yeah, anyway, like I said, I'm still here. I plan on continuing going and I'll let you know what's happening tomorrow. All right, good night. So, uh, 
I looked at this, I have this really nifty water bag now that I can put in my bag and then the tube just comes out. I'm sure everybody knows about those. And, uh, uh, but I looked at it and I couldn't figure out how to open it. So Tina very kindly said that she would have a look and see if she could figure it out for me. I think the only option is to slide it sideways, yeah. but I was just, yours doesn't work that way? It does, it does. But, but there's no way to loosen it first, you know, like a little button or something? Not in mine. Not in yours. No. You just slide it. It should come pretty easily. Uh -huh. Since we're going, that I put this in there and fill this up again. It depends. Tomorrow, probably. Maybe not yeah. in the morning. Have you refilled in Puente La Reina? Mm -hmm. If there's some. Um, yeah, so in Puente La Reina, mm -hmm. then I can, I can refill. Okay. So you don't need to carry that to the shop with Okay. This was one and a half. But the lady at the sports store said it was, uh, she says, oh no, that's a liter. It looks like one and a half to me. And if this is properly two liters, then it is one and a half. It's not two liters. It's not a two liter bottle. No. Oh yeah, no. False advertising. False <coughs> more than two. Okay, got it working. So this is the protector. I'm gonna take this off now. So the idea is it just comes out while I'm walking. Ta-da.